In this video, we're going to see how to integrate Bootstrap in Spring Boot. So Bootstrap is a library used frequently for web rendering. It, can, it contains a bit of JavaScript and CSS and images and many other things. What's nice is that you can make a really nice looking application quickly, regardless of the underlying infrastructure by using something like Spring Boot. And it's easy to implement as well. So this is a nice UI library that we can have in our application. Now, where does, where does Bootstrap fit compared to everything else? Let's start by considering what our application will eventually look like. We will likely have some type of uh, persistence mechanism, probably a database, could be a NoSQL database or a traditional SQL database. On top of that, I have three blocks here in dark blue that represent what we're going to do with Spring Boot, which is essentially the DAO the service, and also the controller layer. We know that we need to have some type of HTML view that the user can look at and interact with. And Timeleaf is a library that interacts between both Spring Boot and also our HTML page, and it essentially makes our Java data available on that HTML page. That's what Timeleaf is doing. It's just making the stuff available. It doesn't have a really big component library like we'd like to see in something like Bootstrap. So Bootstrap comes in to be that HTML rendering library that we're going to use. One easy way to implement Bootstrap is to use a content delivery network or a CDN. This makes it very simple because you simply have to copy a couple of tags or elements, put them into your HTML page, and then when your page is rendered, the browser can use a content delivery network to find the libraries to support Bootstrap. And these libraries might be cached around the world, so it's quite efficient. So I'll start with the CSS, I'll choose Copy, and then I will return to our page, and up in the Head section I'll go ahead and choose Paste. Notice it does several things include adding a link to Bootstrap CDN, and it also adds an integrity and cross-origin tag because it is considered risky to grab something from another website. So you basically have to sign off on it and say, yes, I'm willing to do this. Next, the JavaScript tags are a bit more complicated, but once again, they've created a link for us. So CSS is styling. JavaScript is any kind of logic. So I go ahead and choose copy. And these could really go in head or body. I'm going to go ahead and just post them in the head, keep them all in one place. There are a couple of other tags that it recommends as well. If you take a look at the starter template, you notice it requires a made a car set tag, which says, how are we doing character encoding, and then a viewport tag as well. So let's go ahead and add those into our meta section. Now let's look at a simple proof of concept that we can use. I just went to getbootstrap.com and I'm clicking on get started. Now up at the top, I'll search for input because I know we have a couple of these and I come to input group. There's some things here where we can do like a, a prep end with an at symbol like we see here. That one looks pretty simple. We could also use kind of a, a label and then a text area that follows. You see that's all as one unit. The nice thing is all we need to do is go down here, right click and choose copy. And then we can put that into our page. So copy. And now in our page, we find our form tag and we hit paste. Now this is interesting because you see it's using several attributes of the div element, so div class, which is essentially a CSS class, which marries up to the CSS that we added up here earlier. We know that Timeleaf uses some attributes as well to match up an input element to either a DTO or one of our Java concepts that sits behind the controller. The nice thing is, because these are all just attributes and the names are different, we can share them. So I'm going to take what I copied out and pasted up above, which is a simple bootstrap element, and I'm going to attach to it the identifying information of our longitude and latitude. I simply add that to the input tag that you see here on line number 29. I can, I'll go ahead and delete latitude. I could repeat this with, with each of the others. To save a bit of time, I paused the video and I went ahead and did that. Now you notice that it says, hey, wait a minute, you can't do this because IDs have to be unique in HTML, and in copy and pasting, I copy and pasted the same ID for each of these. So we'll go ahead and say latitude, and then longitude, and this one looks like I didn't change. This one should be description. Plant and specimen will round us out. Let's redeploy and see what we have. 
I re-render the page and you see it has a much more contemporary look and feel. It doesn't look like an industrial HTML page that we had before. Let's confirm that it still works the way it worked before though. Let's change this a little bit. We'll make it plant number 90 specimen. Let's make it specimen 1040. Description, we'll say white pine. I'm just changing a couple things around here so we can ensure that changing the look and feel did not change any of the behavior of the back end. So some unique values, I choose submit, and you notice that sure enough, everything updates up above. So by keeping the business logic out of our look and feel and keeping all of that in the service layer and then the persistence in the DAO layer, you see it's very easy to change our look and feel and make it look a lot better while still reusing and leveraging all of that logic in the back end. So this video has been a quick look at how to implement Bootstrap CDN and how it can be used to enhance our user interface. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.